Jenny Hodgson, welcome back to OB Boss Babes podcast. Thanks for having me, I guess. A little nervous. Oh, Jenny, don't be. It's us. This is so easy. We're just having a chat. It's true. So Jenny, I want to revisit your experience making the leap, changing your careers and the importance of being open to new opportunities. Your dream was to initially open a pub, but the pandemic kind of threw a little bit of a curveball your way and you wound up purchasing Milano's Pizza in Petawawa. So tell us how that opportunity was presented to you. Well, because I was a server, I actually was serving a bachelor parody um, where Ryan Squatter was uh, a guest and we got chatting about business and I had mentioned that I wanted to open my own business at some point and um, about a few months later he messaged me and said I have a building available this is what's in there and we discussed different options as far as a restaurant went and um, I knew the Milano's uh, model from the Pembroke uh, location and I just contacted the president and kind of interviewed with him basically just to make sure I was the right fit and signed a lease and three months later I opened a restaurant. But there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes even more so than that too Jenny especially like having that mindset and that that readiness to be able to take that leap because you were serving and were you also like managing as well dynamics in downtown Pembroke? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, serving, managing, teaching, and um, I was the events coordinator for Algonquin College, so I kind of was just doing everything, um, and I always just really thought, like most employees, I could do it different or better, <laughs> and uh, maybe not necessarily better, but definitely different. Um, you know, uh, the owners of Dynamics were great to learn from, for sure, and all the other people I've worked through uh, in my career. But I just was at the point where I was like, I want to do my own thing. And I always, I think I always had that in my head, but it was time. Like I was like, okay, my kids are good. You know, I can teach, I can do whatever, but this is what I want to do, you know, as opposed to doing it out of a need. It was more a want and like something that I had to um, at least attempt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that actually really stands out to me during my time as a delivery driver for Valley Eats, which I really value because I got to, the, I think actually that's really where this whole, um, this whole venture started for me was being able to meet with so many different business owners, but also like the staff that were working so hard behind the scenes. And you were the face of dynamics. I never knew who the business owners were. When I would come in to pick up that food, it was you that I was chatting with at dynamics. You and I were shooting the shit. We were going back and forth and talking and you could really tell your passion for like the industry and, and hospitality. And that was really, I think where you learned about what customers liked, what they wanted, um, managing a business and what that looked like because obviously like for a restaurant for those that aren't in it daily they don't really understand the different challenges the curveballs and and even the um you know the, the complaints that come through from customers and yeah. so um you're constantly learning like how you want to be treated as as a staff you're learning how to build that trust with your community and and run a business that's actually going to be profitable and provide an experience to people because food and an experience goes hand in hand so Jenny, one of the things that I really remember back when I was a delivery driver working for Valley Eats was actually meeting business owners, but, just, but as well as like the staff that were working hard behind the scenes. And one of the things that really stood out to me was like, I honestly thought that you were the, the person behind Dynamics. Like I never, for that business specifically, I never got to know the business owners there, but I got to know you. And those times are really pivotal, I think, in my own journey into entrepreneurship and kind of learning a little bit about the ins and outs of, of different industries and what it all takes. And so you have years of working as a server and you also have years of working in, in different hospitality aspects as a server. And that contributes to the excess of how you run a business. It contributes to the success of how you treat your staff, as well as how you build trust with your community. So how do you do that? So yeah, I guess you're right. Years of serving or jumping in the kitchen or planning events for um, different restaurants, menus that I worked at, um, definitely made me see how I would want to kind of do things in my own place. 
but also gave me those skills of how I did or did not want to be treated or I didn't want to treat my staff, let's say. Um, not that I had really any terrible bosses, but everybody has a certain thing about them that, you know, maybe people like or don't like. And so I tried to bring the best of everybody that I've learned from through the years into my business, right? And uh, try to make my staff my friends almost, um, or children, since they're <laughs> usually quite a bit younger than me. Um, but like, I want them to feel valued and treated uh, with respect. I can't um, necessarily pay them, you know, $40 an hour. It's a pizza restaurant. But I want them to feel like when they come to work, they're valued. And sometimes that is worth more than um, money, right? Um, and I had three people go off to university this year and college. And like, I'm still in contact with them. They're still texting me, telling me how life is and stuff. And I think that comes with working for people for so long and taking all that positive um, stuff that I learned and then bringing it into my own place. And I'm not perfect because trust me, there's days where I'm sure people are like, ooh, she's not a great boss. But I try to bring it back and be real with people and say, you know what? I messed up today. I lost my temper or I was upset about ABC. And I'm going to try not to make that happen again and do better. But these are life lessons, though, that I think that you've experienced and learned from as well during your time. You know how you want to be treated. You know how you want to be recognized. And I think that that's a really big piece that employers tend to kind of forget about their organization is like the reason why we are so successful is because of like the team behind it that are making oh, yes. these moves and that are creating that customer experience that are the ones that are meeting with their Valley Eats drivers, the ones that are making the food behind the counter. Like those people deserve to be recognized. And it's one thing to do um, like uh, meet the staff appreciation on the socials, but it's another thing to do a little bit more and take that extra step behind the scenes. And you do that as well, like with your employee of the month and discounts and, and really showcasing your staff recognizing them because they want to feel valued and we've learned in this day and age that more beyond benefits and pay it goes a long way i i agree like i just i again it's really just about being a family um i can understand that you know your mom's sick and you're worried about her and you need time off or you know the different things and the more they feel valued my staff even though 90% of the people that work for me are high school kids, they are going to treat my customers that much better because they feel like they are um, a part of the business, not just another number, another person who's punching in orders or whatever right. it happens to be. And I expect that not just from my front of house staff, like my kitchen staff, my delivery drivers. I want everybody to have a positive outlook on things, right? Like not everything's going to be perfect all the time, but I want customers to feel like they can come back and feel welcome. And we have regulars that like the customers are, or the staff is like, oh, that's John from whatever street, you know, and, yeah. and they know exactly what he wants and what his order is. And, and that's a, a nice feeling when you go somewhere, right? Like going to your local pub and they open up your Budweiser as you come in. Know it's the little, but want. it's those little things though that yeah. like that that recognition and like mm -hmm. that memory being like yep I know who that is and I know what their order is but also like I think a big aspect of this conversation that we have to kind of focus in on too Jenny is like retaining your staff especially when you're working with such young people that are that are looking at this as a part-time job but you have a lot of people who've been with you since you've opened your doors like long term you have students that are leaving that you know there is that potential of coming back and making it a career they're looking at you and seeing like wow like what a success story like that she was able to do something like that and now more than ever it's so hard to find good staff let alone retain them for a long period of time yeah so like I hear these horror stories of people yeah. like I have no staff I have no staff and, I, and it's not that I have a ton of staff but the ones that are there are there yeah you know like they're committed um now mind you three just went off to university uh or college but they're but, not quitting but they didn't quit like they've already said oh we're back at Thanksgiving and we're back at Christmas and we want to work and you know and they're keeping in touch so I feel like that is, you know, the best I can ask for as being a boss, right? That they want to come back because if they hate their jobs, 
you're not going to want to come back at Christmas and Thanksgiving for sure. What else do you think that you're doing differently? I don't know. I feel like I'm just me. Honestly, like yeah. the way I am here right now, the way I'm at work, the way I'm at home is the same person. Like you're not going to get some, well, you might see me in my pajamas at home, but <laughs> other than that, I'm just a pretty laid back person. And I yeah. just try to live my life that way. Right. Like I don't look down on people because they don't have certain things and I don't look, I mean, I obviously, you know, this house is beautiful that we're in today and, and stuff. But, and I'm like, wow, wouldn't that be cool? But I'm also like realistic and I'm happy where I am. And you got to be happy with what you have, I think. Um, I have a beautiful family and, and I'm just happy. So I try to do that at work too. And yeah. yeah, Jenny, this is actually one of the things I really appreciate and respect of you is the fact that you are authentically and genuinely yourself, which is why I think that so many people are drawn to you and your personality. You're one of us. Like you are no different than Joe Schmo down the road. You are real. You're authentic. You put it out there. And when you have bad days, you talk about it. When you have good days, you talk about it. And one of the things that I really love about like how you incorporate community into what you do, which is like so random, but yet so genius and brilliant is the fact that like when you're representing like these, all these different hats and I say like, you're wearing a lot of hats, but you're actually physically wearing different hats from organizations. And I want to kind of get into the story a little bit of how this, how this kind of started. But when you see so many people like giving you their hats to like show up on the socials, I think that really speaks something a lot more than, than the physical aspect of it. It was, it's so funny how it came about. To be honest. <laughs> Tell everybody who like doesn't understand what I'm talking about. So I have to wear a hat because it's a kitchen um, or a hairnet and I don't know if you know, but they're pretty unattractive, <laughs> you know, no, no one looks so, good in a hairnet. <laughs> no, nobody looks good in a hairnet. Um, and I couldn't find my hat for some reason. And like literally probably wore the same hat every day. So when, um, one of my regulars down at uh, Mitsubishi called for a sub or whatever, and I, I said for a joke, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to send your sub. Can you send me a hat? And he did with my delivery driver. So I put the hat on and put a thank you on Facebook. Like, oh, I was down a hat today. Thanks to so-and-so at, uh, well, Reed at Mitsubishi. And, uh, you know, I really needed a hat today. And then somebody said, oh, you need a hat. And then next thing you knew, I had like, you know, all different business. Like I couldn't even name them all. Yeah, like, there are so <laughs> many. I probably do have like 25 different hats from different businesses. So when we went for our like Christmas staff dinner, I brought all the hats and made my staff each put a hat on and we took a picture. That's so fun. Because <laughs> I was just like overwhelmed by it. It seems so silly. It's a hat, right? Like a ball cap. But it just, and then I, I was like, well, I have to thank everybody. So every day I wore a different hat and took a picture and put it on social media. But you created like a movement and a trend with that. And people couldn't wait to get their hats in your hands. Or I should say on your heads. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, it was fun. It was it's kind of tapered off now, but I still have like 25 hats. You're so still accepting great. hats. So if yeah, somebody so has if a hat, that... OV boss babe hat, I'll take it. Okay. I'm going to have to get on that. <laughs> Jenny, when I think of pizza, I think of community. I mean, not just like that hot, fresh slice of heaven that's going in my mouth, but I'm thinking about Friday night, like that last minute dinner request that I'm looking, you know, with my family, it's that late night pizza order when we've all got the munchies, when I'm with my friends or my child's birthday party, like it just isn't a party without pizza. So let's talk about how pizza is the food that brings family and friends together, which like I said, is the ultimate slice of heaven. Yeah. Like it's, it's a tradition thing. I think yes. a lot of times for, for a family dinner in general, and I'm happy that if somebody chooses that Sunday night is their pizza night from Milano's Petawawa, even better, right? Um, and we do have that. We have those uh, repeat customers. You know that on Tuesday night, this person's ordering pizza because their kid has a karate lesson and they're not cooking dinner or whatever it happens to be, right? And uh, sometimes like when people call for something like a birthday party or something or a retirement party, I'm asking them like a thousand questions, like as if I'm inviting myself to the party, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, but I just want to know because I don't want to send too much. Like, yes, it's nice if people buy 25 pizzas, but if they only need 20, then I don't want to be that person that they're like, wow, she told me I needed this many. Right. So I think that goes a long way with community as well is 
not overselling or, um, you know, pushing stuff on people that they don't necessarily need. Um, and, and I'm just happy to be a part of the Petawawa community in general, right? So. Hey, it's Jen from Wilder Waters, and you're tuning in to Ottawa Valley Boss Babes podcast. Hyundai Pembroke is your locally owned and operated Hyundai dealership right here in the heart of the Ottawa Valley. We're signature certified and strive to give all of our customers a stellar experience. Whether you're looking for a new or pre-owned vehicle or simply gathering information, our team of knowledgeable professionals are here to help you on your journey to find the perfect vehicle for your lifestyle and budget. We pride ourselves on being a diverse and inclusive workplace and are huge community supporters. We would love the opportunity to earn your business. We service all makes and models and our qualified master technicians will have your vehicle in tip top shape. Stop into 1945 Petawawa Boulevard or visit us online at HyundaiPembroke.ca. Give us a shot. Join the Hyundai Pembroke family today. Having been in the Ottawa Valley for over four decades and dedicating herself to working in the service industry, Rebecca Wyatt created Beyond Lashes Aesthetics as a way to help women in business grow within the beauty industry, while also giving the women of the valley a welcoming beauty salon experience. Rebecca offers a wide variety of lashes and brow services, including lash extensions, lifts, tint, lamination and waxing. Rebecca's priority is making sure everyone who walks through her door feels absolutely beautiful. Now open at her new location, you can find Beyond Lashes Aesthetics at 1027 Victoria Street in Petawawa, or to learn more and book an appointment, you can visit her website at www.beyondlashesaesthetics.ca. Welcome to Gila Beauty, your local luxury go-to spa here in the Ottawa Valley for all things beauty and wellness. With locations now open in both Pembroke and Petawawa, you can find a diverse selection of spa, medical, and permanent makeup services to suit your needs. Our Petawawa location offers a growing selection of spa and medical services, including nail care, facials, relaxation massages, spray tans, lashes, sugaring, and our newly opened sauna. Our medical services in Petawawa include dermatology, body contouring, laser treatments, cosmetic injections, and IV treatments. Our team here at Gila Beauty is available Monday to Wednesday, 10 to 7, and Thursday to Saturday, 10 to 5, to assist you and help you with any questions you may have about our services and treatments. To learn more or to book directly, you can visit us at www.gilabeauty.org or give us a call at 613-735-4504. We look forward to seeing you. Welcome to the town of Petawawa. Situated between the Petawawa River and Ottawa River, Petawawa is an ideal place for getting on the water or a family day on the beach. If you'd rather keep your feet dry, enjoy some hikes or snowshoe adventures on some of our local nature trails, we have the Petawawa Terrace and Algonquin Trail, which passes right through the town centre, offering opportunities for walks, hiking, ATV and snowmobile excursions. You can also come celebrate with us at various special events throughout the year, including the Upper Ottawa River Race and Paddle Festival, Get to the Point Beach Party, or most recently, our Petawawa Ramble. To learn more about the services the town of Petawawa offers, a list of our upcoming events, local business directory, or if you're looking for information for residents, you can visit our website at www.petawawa.ca. See you on the trails! Hey, it's Jen from Wilder Waters, and you're tuning in to Ottawa Valley Boss Babes podcast. Now, the pizza industry, though, Jenny, it's also an oversaturated market, right? Because nine times out of 10, a small town might not have a McDonald's or even a Tim Hortons, but chances are that they have a mom and pop pizza shop that's there. So what does your business model look like in differentiating what Milano's Pizza is doing as a franchise, but also enticing people to want to place those orders with you and putting that personal touch in, in your experience? Yeah, you're right. There, I bet you there's seven pizza places in Petawawa, give or take. Yeah. Um, and then other options as well. So what am I doing differently? I think I'm just being real. Oh my God. I don't even know. I don't even know how to explain No, no, you're it. going somewhere there. You're being, so you are being real. I'm, I think I'm trying to be 
you know, not, I don't have to be everybody's favorite pizza place, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I'm happy if they choose that. And um, my business model is like, if we make a mistake, we're going to own it and we're going to fix it and we're going to get the right thing to the customer, but also like do the best that we can do, right? So if somebody wants, you know, an order for a family dinner with pizza and wings and whatever, we want that to be an experience. We want it to be the, that's their supper for the night. And the big thing is, is making sure that they get what they asked for, right? Like, so if somebody wants mushrooms on their pizza and we forget the mushrooms, well, that's not what they ordered. Yeah, it was fine. And they still ate it. They got pepperoni and bacon instead of pepperoni, bacon and mushrooms, let's say, but that's not okay. Right? Like, I don't want it to just be okay. And they swallowed it and ate it. I want them to get what they wanted you spend a lot of money on dinner. And so like, I'm very adamant with my staff. Like if we make a mistake, if you pull it out of the oven and you realize it's wrong or it's burnt or it's whatever, remake it. I would rather it be 10 minutes late and right and lose maybe $10 or $5 if I have to discount, if I have to discount it, then the customer get the completely wrong thing and not be happy. Right. So I guess just being honest is my business model. The nice thing too is that we have to remember that you're coming from a franchise perspective where Milano's Pizza is a franchise. So we can find Milano's all across, uh, like there's Renfrew, Armprior, and then of course in Ottawa. But one thing that makes Milano's Pizza Petawawa a little bit different and and unique are your cheesecakes, Jenny. Yeah, they're they're becoming famous. Actually, at one point I was like, did I open a pizza restaurant or a cheesecake business? (laughs) Like it was insane the amount of people that wanted to try these cheesecakes. Um, and I, I don't fancy myself a baker by any means. <laughs> like I, I, like I was a front of house person for years and now I'm like in the kitchen all the time cooking and, yep. and making cheesecake and pizza and dough and, and all these things. Right. Um, but the cheesecakes have become famous and that's the thing I like about, even though Milano's is a franchise, um, there is freedom to do a little bit of what you want to do. Right. So I wanted to have cheesecake. I wanted to have my homemade spinach dip on the menu and certain things that other Milanos don't necessarily have. So they have a great business model where, yes, you have to serve, you know, X, Y, and Z of their menu, like their Milanos um, specialties, let's say, but also you can put your own twist on it as an owner and, and add things to the menu that you want and you can do your own specials and, and whatnot. So I do like that there is still some freedom where you're not locked into a specific uh, menu. And one of the things that I just have to point out, Jenny, is like I was looking on your Facebook page. I was looking on your website and I couldn't necessarily find like a menu for your cheesecakes. And when I was preparing your questions, I actually slid in your in your DMs, which you graciously responded to me right away. And I had said, Jenny, what's going on with your cheesecakes? Like, do you still have, do you still have any? Like, are you still selling them? And you're like, yep, I do. And here's what I have. Do you want one? (laughs) And that just makes you realize like about how far a a business owner will go to make their community and customer happy and and friend too, right? Like, cause you, you just, to get that extra touch to be like, cause then I was like, kind of thinking to myself like, oh wait, do I want a cheesecake right now? (laughs) And I was just making that it. sale. No. But you won't, but you don't even need to advertise them though, Jenny. It's like kind of what I'm getting at here. You don't even need to advertise them because they sell out like that. They sell so quick. Like I so quick. Cut them up, put them in the fridge in the display case, and they're gone by supper time. And I, I almost need another me just to make cheesecakes sometimes. Yeah. And it, it's funny because they go in spurts, right? So holidays and stuff like that. Like everybody wants cheesecake or else a whole a lot of whole cheesecakes for birthdays or uh, holidays and events and stuff. And then, um, right after Christmas, when everybody was doing their new year's resolutions, I couldn't sell a cheesecake to save my life for about three weeks. Oh <laughs> so, gosh. Yeah. So Isn't that go. crazy? Eh? Yeah. It's interesting. So if you eh? ever want cheesecake, like January 3rd, I'll probably <laughs> have some. Jenny, you've always been a community champion and right from the very beginning, Milano's pizza has been committed to being a part of our community and giving back From your $10 pizza fundraisers, raising money for various initiatives and sponsoring events and sports tournaments, you never say no and you always put your community first. And I really think that's important to highlight. I recognize that and our community recognizes that. 
So how can others take a page from your books to do the same? Well, it might seem like I never say no, but I do say no sometimes. <laughs> it's just because I do a lot of them, right? You do. So, um, yeah, I just, I think it's really important that if you can still, you know, obviously cover your costs, but do some sort of fundraising of some sorts, I think it's really important to the community. Um, I'm... I am one of those people that will say yes all the time. And, and so I do try to like pick certain things that I are near and dear to my heart. So something with the schools or, um, like the cancer foundation or something like that. But every, I mean, every cause is a good cause, right? So it's hard to, hard to pick just one or two things that you're like, oh, I really want to support this because I mean, in real reality, I'd love to support everything. Right. right? Um, but the pizza fundraisers seem to be, um, definitely popular where you know I donate four dollars from each pizza and people pay ten dollars and they don't have to worry about dinner um so it was five dollars in the beginning but the price of cost of course price of groceries has gone up so we're at, we're at four but people are really happy with that oh and people like cannot complain about and, a ten dollar pizza Jenny no I don't think so no I don't even like you know and and I think the fact that it's being donated yeah is even like more important yeah. than the cost of the pizza, and right? And every time I see that you're you're advertising those, I make sure to get on the phone with you around like two or three o'clock to get our pizzas so that we're right yeah, in line. Yeah, because it's the, like crazy busy. It is. <laughs> yeah. It's so busy. And you guys end up raising so much money towards each of these. Like they're really popular. And that's, again, when you really see the community coming together and, and supporting whatever cause or initiative that is, but also like supporting your business. So it really is completing the whole circle or the every piece of the pie, you know, like, everybody is benefiting from that in the in in the long run which is it's so incredible to see it's yeah. so cool and you mentioned Valley Eats earlier and they're very supportive yeah. so when I do those like pizza fundraisers I give them a heads up saying like hey you might be really busy with deliveries for Valley Eats because I make sure it's on Valley Eats that day as well so that um because you know I only have so many delivery drivers and Maybe people in Pembroke want it and we're in Petawawa. And so we try to accommodate as many people as possible. It's really, it's really interesting though, Jenny, that like you took this approach so early on in business because like, especially being still like a startup business in, in your regard, like so many businesses want to wait until they get established or they have more, I don't know, like they've kind of like established themselves a little bit longer in business, but like right from the get go, you've done that. Like that you just don't see that that often I think that just goes with like being a part of the community for so long and wanting to help where I can help I guess yeah Jenny what's been the most challenging thing that you've experienced since you went into business yourself I guess like honestly I thought I'd be like the face of the business and yes I take pictures for social media sometimes but uh I thought I'd be like the cashier out front chatting with the customers and doing all that stuff. Like I'm literally in the kitchen cooking alongside the other cooks the whole time. It seems like, like I'm making sure the products in the oven going out. And like, I think the other challenge was like, I didn't realize how much work it would be. I mean, I've always had two or three jobs on the go. So I'm not afraid to work, but I'm like, wow, even when I'm not there, I'm thinking about the place or I'm planning what's next or scheduling or figuring out a food order. You know, your brain's kind of always there um, even when you're not there. Mm -hmm. So I think that's been the most difficult thing is to shut it off and still have Jenny time. Right. (laughs) Or family time or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's hard. It's so difficult to be able to do that because like you're constantly thinking about the next step. You're constantly thinking about like, okay, like, you know, especially if you're having a slow week or something, it's like, what's a way to get, get more, more pizzas on people's tables and stuff too. And the other thing too, that we have to kind of remember too, Jenny is like, we had a really hot summer. And so when we had our ACs going on in our house and we're like, oh, we're all too, we're all too hot to cook or we don't want to turn on our ovens. You know, who wasn't too hot to turn their ovens on the pizza places that were still putting foods in our, like food on our tables. So were there times this summer where you were looking ahead at the weather being like, we've got a plan for a rush? I think it was more like get some extra water in the building because it's like when it's 40 degrees outside, it's like 45 degrees in the restaurant. Like everybody that comes in there says, do you not have AC? Yeah, of course they say that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, we do. 
you if you stand on that vent, you can feel it, yeah. you know, kind of thing. But everybody's hovering around there like with their heads. Pizza ovens <laughs> and whatever. Um, so yeah, like people were like, I'm not cooking. So they were ordering, especially that heat wave we had. Was it last week that we had yeah. a massive heat wave? Like nobody was cooking. It was too hot. Like even to barbecue, you didn't want to stand outside, right? So um definitely those rushes, but then there's also like the the dips, right? Because I'm in a military community and there was like leave and people overseas and, and whatnot, right? So um, definitely there was like dips in business too. So like when you think it's going to be busy, you're right. You plan for it and you you love those busy days. Yeah. <laughs> what has your secret ingredient, Jenny, been to success that you found so far? I would say my staff, my family support and my staff support, right? Like I come up with these $10 pizza crazy specials for a fundraiser and they love to hate them you know what I mean the staff like they're like oh it's gonna be nuts and we're gonna you know for lack of a better term get our asses handed to us yeah. you know like yeah. anybody who's worked in the kitchen knows that terminology and it's like it's crazy whirlwind of busy for hours on end and then when it's done and I tell them like hey we just raised a thousand dollars for these kids to go to the science center they're like, okay, it was worth it. You yeah. know what I mean? Or like just my family support. Like I work long, crazy hours and thank God for my husband that works from home. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't say thank goodness for that, but he, you know, he's there with our eight-year-old and supporting him and doing dishes and cooking dinners and stuff. So if it wasn't for him, I may never have a normal supper. <laughs> just like, yeah, I was just going to say <laughs> eating pizza every night. And of course, Jenny, we can't walk away from this conversation without bringing up your BFF, non-sexual life partner, the one who's been there right from the get-go, Tanya. Yeah. And she's still kicking around. Like she moved to the, Val well, moved back to Petawawa. <gasps> she did? Yeah. She's, um, and she's working in her travel business. And uh, Amazing. I think she goes to the office like two or three days a week now that like COVID is, you know, done and stuff. And uh, she's. She, but she still like yesterday she popped in on her lunch and I was busy and she's like, what do you need? And she started cutting tomatoes and lettuce and prepping up my table again for whatever needed to be done. And I was like, did you come here to get lunch? And she's like, yeah, but that's okay. Like she just started working. <laughs> yeah. And just a little bit of a refresher for my listeners and, and uh, watchers as well is that we had actually mentioned about Tanya and I don't even know how that conversation came up in your first interview, Jenny, but like just to have that supportive partner that's like right there alongside with you without any expectations about, you know, like, like I was kind of saying to our first guest there, Stacy is, you know, like what's in it for me, but just to genuinely be there for you and want to help. And I mean, there were times when I called and went to place an order and it was her answering the phone. Oh yeah. Like she'll come in and do anything. And she doesn't even, she like, I think she was there for a good week when our family had COVID. Yeah. She ran the place for 12 hours a day. She had no idea how to make a pizza, like, but she, you know, she knew how to manage people and, uh, and she, she helped keep your doors she, open and she winged it yeah. and she did it. And, and I said to her at the end of the week, I said, well, I gotta pay you. And she's like, no, no, she wouldn't take a cent. That's an amazing friend. She's like, I took some pizza home. Like, <laughs> I guess it's worth it. I suppose that's okay, but you owe me 20 bucks. No. <laughs> yeah. And Jenny, what are some of your goals and next steps that you want to accomplish in your business? Like, are you looking towards expansion? franchising, maybe even opening up that pub down the road? I feel like I'm not getting any younger, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm happy where I am. Um, I have been asked a few times to go in on other uh, restaurants or ideas, um, but for now, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, and uh, maybe someday uh, that'll happen, but uh, I'm not sure that... Uh, I'm young enough for a pub anymore. <laughs> you know? What you're doing is working. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can make my own hours. And, and I don't know if I had two places that I could still do that because I'd be running between the two maybe. Um, but who knows? Like, I'm not, I'm not closing the door. I'm just saying I'm happy where I am right yeah. now. And Jenny, who is one local boss babe that inspires you that you think everyone should know about? So like, I hate this question. I know you do. Everybody does. You know why? Because like literally you could have had probably 50 people that I admire on this show today, right? And like the community we live in, there's so many 
um, people that are inspiring. Like, honestly, I could give you like my top 10 list and that probably wouldn't even cover it, right? Like I said, the last one, it was Shannon Slaughter and I still love her and I still follow her lives on Friday. Like Joanna from The Nook and Jocelyn from The Courtyard and like Tanya's inspiring. Like she basically works for herself, but she's a travel agent. So it's like, everybody has these qualities and I'm like, man, I wish I could do that. And I wish I could do that and, and be that person and bring all those awesome qualities into one and just be a super Jenny. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Have little qualities from each of them. So it's hard to pick just one, to be honest. Yeah, it is hard. But I think that like you, you hit the nail on the head there. It's like, there are so many women that we all take something away from that we admire about them. And I think that that's, I mean, it sounds cliche, but that's what makes us all special and unique and different. And like, there really is something special about each person that we can be like, you know what? I really like that about that person and they're doing something right. And I wish I could like kind of have what their business model looks like. But that's why it's so important to be able to like champion one another and support one another and just show up every day, just being our authentic and true selves. And that, like I said, Jenny, that's what you're doing and you inspire me every day. And so thank you for being a part of uh, my anniversary special and taking the time out of your day to shut down Milano's pizza and, you know, give your, give your staff a little bit of a break today. But uh, yeah, like I just, I, I'm watching and I appreciate you and everything that you do for us. Oh, I appreciate you and, and just everything you do, like showcasing all these people and women and, and honestly, like, I got to get hair and makeup. Like, I feel like a princess today. You do. <laughs> you look like a princess. And you know what, Jenny? Cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers to us, babe. Mm -hmm.